Hi, welcome to the Pursuit of Truth on Anchor FM and YouTube. I think the other place it's on is Castbox. Anyway, it doesn't really matter if you're hearing it. <laughs> um, so, a few things I'm going to go through, they're all a bit interconnected uh, that I've picked up on, um, which I think sometimes, I, I, my, my, me personally, I find it negates uh, the subject a little bit, um, but I guess the problem is, is uh, as I go into the last part, you know, each of us is different. We all have different approaches, so there's no real set rule. I'm just airing my opinions. So the one thing I've noticed that comes up a lot, and I, I have once or twice um, felt this as well, is um, the paranoia. That you get when you, um, especially flat Earth, more than the false flag conspiracy things, um, and I, I don't know if that's because your what you believed in is unraveling, and you, I mean, I suppose, like from a psychological point of view, they would say that it's because you don't have a foundation anymore, and so you become worried about everyone and everything. But I've noticed that there's a lot of that. That if you listen to a lot of people on, you know, talking about conspiracies, flat earth, false flag, 9-11, whatever, there's a lot of paranoia. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I think that might give way to false arguments. Because, you know, people think that, um, you know, like the, the Illuminati aspect or television being manipulated and, people making films and putting hidden messages in them. I mean, I don't, I can't say whether they are or aren't, but there's a lot of, you know, it's like where at the end of the day, nothing can be trusted. Maybe that's the truth. I don't know. Um, but it just seems like too much that, I mean, then, so there's nothing we can trust, nothing we can believe that everything we've grown up upon is a lie. I mean, all the, the teachers that are, propping up all this stuff, are they all involved in it? I don't think so. I think there's like select few. And it's like with movies as well, that people often, you know, suggest that movies are hiding bits in them. But I'm just trying to think, how would you practically go about doing that? You know, if they wanted to put, you know, you get, if you YouTube these things, you'll find this kind of material. And I'm thinking, well, you know, we've got a director, you've got a writer, you've got a producer. Obviously you've got the people high up who, who can make demands, I assume, you know, the head of a, of, a, of a company like Fox or Paramount or whoever can suggest that, oh, they want this, that and the other, but I don't know whether they would actually go about doing that. And are all these writers or all these directors, Illuminati, and they're all putting their own, you know, coding in there. So I, I just think there's, it is, I guess it's difficult to check it, whether it's just someone's fantasy or whether it has some kind of basis to it but I think then that comes I think I mentioned this before that then it leads you to where do you stop believing you know is, is like the example I always bring is David Icke's reptile people the other thing I notice is, is, is ego and I think that's a big problem especially when people start out on these things and then become very popular and then they they without knowing it become very egotistical and I think there can be a problem, but the problem is, is that obviously each, each person is different, and I think that's that's the one thing we we tend to judge a lot. It's like, for example, if a say a tramp started a YouTube channel, that terminology in itself is is indicative of the problem. But let's say that happens, and then he starts speaking the truth, people are going to look down upon him. I mean, not everyone will, but he, despite his claims, if a man with the you know with the with the um, looking like a, a scientist comes on, then we're going to believe him. But th this is all about our programming. So it is difficult to get around those things unless you understand that you have been programmed to a certain extent. Uh, the other thing I think is a problem is manners. A lot of people, they, they get so wound up in their thing that they start to lose their manners. And I think sometimes that I mean, I know we should be angry, and I know we should be upset about being lied to, and and not 
and the way that our life is being led. I suppose it doesn't really matter, but it just sometimes I find that people could be less responsive of your argument if you lose your manners and you go off on a rant. But then I guess if you're passionate, you know, it's difficult to, to harness that. I guess the thing is, is we're trained to look at a certain type of person and believe them in their manners. If they're shouting and screaming, then people are going to think, oh, these are crazy, but and they might not be, they might be just passionate. Like my favourite film, one of my favourite films, Network, you know, where he's screaming, I'm a man as how, I'm not going to take it anymore. I don't think of him as crazy, I think of him as enlightened. But some people will because of his manner, because of the way we've been brought up. The other thing I think is, uh, is, is questionable science. Now, I don't know that much about science. I, I think I've got an E or a D in GCSE science. So a lot of these things, you know, I wouldn't be able to, with my knowledge, prove or not like, to do with the, the earth and the, the curvature and all that kind of stuff. And I know there are people out there who can. But I know there's a lot, to me, what sounds like questionable science. And maybe this is also because some of the science is, is lies as well. I don't know. And we, we, we believe science is being fact. And, you know, we're, that's weighted down. So if you ever challenge science, it's like, who, who are you to talk about science? Well, that's not necessarily true because we know that people lie all the time. And we know that a lot of science is theories. And, they, and you know, I've learned that things like the theory of gravity and the theory of relativity, they're all theories, but we believe them as facts and we get taught to them, taught, taught them as facts. And there shows you there's already a problem with that, how we look at science as being holy than thou, holy art thou, oh, whatever it is. So yeah, questionable science, that's a problem. Some people come up with claims or, or they will believe 100% in something without, you know, there may be things that we're unaware of. You know, for instance, you know, we believe that our eyes see everything, but, we, you know, anyone knows a little bit of science that our eyes can't see certain things. You know, let's say like infrared, or, or they can't see a certain amount of distance. Or, like I've learned, I didn't realise that when you see things, you know, things that they tend to go into a, into a point. So that's why they tend to converge, like, in, in like a triangle. I didn't know that. So what I mean is, Sometimes we say things without full knowledge and are unaware of that full knowledge. But the problem is, is you do get people who, who are scientists who, who make all sorts of claims and you, know, you, can, you, you can tell they don't make sense. Or they're, they're, they're clutching onto things that are theories rather than fact, as if they are fact. But I think that's the problem, is questionable science. Like if I started to make claims, that I couldn't back up, that would be, I would be falling into that same trap. But I think sometimes people have a, a I, don't, I mean, this sounds like falling into the, the idea of establishment and scientists being right. And maybe this is to do with the programming again, but I always feel that, you know, there may be something you don't understand that explains something that you're unaware of, that things are more complex than, than they seem. Sometimes I think when we talk about natural science, some of those things, maybe they allude to more complicated matters. I don't know. That's just my suggestion. But I guess the people who know what they're talking about will know what they're talking about. I guess it worries me because I don't always know everything. I can hear two sides of the story and believe both of them because my knowledge is lacking. Science is a very complicated thing. I think that's the problem. <laughs> um, the other thing is freedom of views. Um, there's a lot of problems I find that people, you know, when they come down either on the globe or flat earth, that they then suddenly, you know, forget that we should all have freedom to view our opinions and that at points we may change. And so it's always, that's the whole point of that what we should be establishing is a place where we can all be free to view our opinions without being attacked too much. As long as we're showing uh, you know, proper manners and taking it seriously and are open. But there are people who will, you know, when they believe you know, they move over to a certain different subject and then suddenly they will come down very heavy on those who don't believe in that. But that, it, it, it becomes hypocritical because the same people have been doing the same thing before. So I think we always have to be 
aware of you know the freedom to view our opinions and and to know that we may change if we alienate someone by saying no no you, you know you're wrong you know without you know being so definite then then people are never going to be open to change the other thing that, that connects to that is that I notice that there does seem to be an anti-semitic anti-semitic um, political correctness aspect I notice as well which I, I don't like you know a lot of people will just say things that they can't quantify or you know a lot of it I think is to do with YouTube and how some of the things that they claim and who knows whether these things are true or not but I think a lot of people who like to say things who are maybe slightly racist like to say them because they can get away with saying them by pretending that they're real where there's no I think there's a sketchy ground when you start talking about people in, in, in groups because, you know, like when they say all oh, the Jews do, are doing this and that and the other, it's not all of the Jews. It may be one or two Jewish people, but there may be also one or two non-Jewish people, but no one will say, you know, it's the, the non-Jewish people doing it. Do you know what I mean? They label it and that seems to be like an anti-Semitic thing and I, I don't like that. It's not. You know, you can't say all of someone are doing something. That If you start saying that, that's definitely not true because it's not all of. So you are invoking a, a kind of racism. And um, the other thing, the last thing that wraps all this up and sort of negates it in a way is like personal character, that, that no one is perfect and everyone is different. We all have different approaches, you know. Me, I'm very like this, I'm very sort of calm. I mean, I can get riled up, don't get me wrong, but that's mm -hmm. my manner. I try to be polite, I try to be reasonable, I try to look at things that are over in mind, but I'm not perfect, and no one is perfect. And I guess the problem is, is we tend to, you know, if we see certain different characters that we don't like or things that we don't like, we instantly, you know, react to it. We're like, triggered, I guess is the word. And sometimes we have to try and get away from that and sort of not try to be so triggered. Allow people to have other opinions and, and allow yourself to analyse different things. I'm not saying change, I'm just saying that we tend to sort of see that everyone should be like ourselves or everyone should be like a certain way. And, you know, people can say the truth in many different forms, in many different ways, with many different looks. Yeah, I guess that's all the answers there. So, you know, it's, um, that is a difficult thing because we are trained as, as a person, as I, and we tend to look down on certain things, you know, that you, that's enforced in, 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 in I'm going to say, in, in the media. And then I was saying before that, you know, but I don't think these things are, like I was saying before, I don't think people are particularly like, you know, like, um, Someone, if you want to show them as, you know, drunk or disheveled, that means it has a negative connotation, you know, or, or someone like a tramp, that's someone who's fallen. You know, there's sort of, I know the movies do have sort of like the white hat, the black hat, you know, that kind of generic thing, which we all understand the symbols of, you know, so they, it's easy to tell a story by having a certain thing. You know, like if you want to show someone who's, who's lost everything, you just show him like a bit like unshaven, his shirt out, you know, drinking the bottle, you know, oh, he's lost his wife or something bad's happened to him, you know, without actually explaining lots of different things. But whether people are actually, I think the thing is we all fall in the traps of following these things. I'm a, a right poet, and, you know, I use certain things to evoke certain things. I guess we're all following the language that we've been taught. Anyway, yeah, these are the opinions I thought um, I'll talk about today, and... That's the thing, they're just my opinions. You don't have to believe them, you don't have to not believe them. I'm, I guess you can ask why am I airing my opinions as if you need to hear them or not. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Take care, take it easy. God bless and peace.